Hey everyone, I'm Anna Dolosky. If you are a woman who gets routine mammograms, you probably know by now whether or not you have dense breasts. But what you may not know is that the process of identifying breast density is far from clear cut. In fact, it all depends on who is interpreting the results. Take a look. A recent report shows identifying dense breasts is largely subjective among radiologists. Dense breasts are not rare nor abnormal. It means there is more connective tissue and less fatty tissue in the breasts. 10% of women have extremely dense breasts and 80% fall into one of two middle categories. Dense breasts make it more difficult for radiologists to detect possible abnormalities or a tumor on a mammogram. And the presence of dense tissue itself is an independent risk factor for breast cancer, which is why correctly identifying density is key. In the report, 36.9% of mammograms were rated as showing dense breasts, but when read by various radiologists, this percentage rated from 6.3% to nearly 85%. Some experts say that's a lot of room for error, and it's one of the reasons ACSH advisor Dr. Robert Bard started his radiology practice. He recalls speaking to a colleague about the limitations of a mammogram. Dr. Leese called me up and said, every time I do a mammogram on a lady with a dense or lumpy breast, it misses the cancer, every time. On the Bard Cancer Center website, Dr. Bard notes the current standard in screening for breast cancer is mammography. However, this imaging tool misses some breast tumors, especially in women with dense breasts, whose risks of developing breast cancer are higher. Currently, 26 U.S. states require that women be notified if they have dense breasts. Dr. Bard says that wasn't always the case. Unfortunately, for years and years, they didn't do it. They would simply say that there's nothing showing up on the mammogram, which means you could have an extremely dense breast, very high risk of cancer, and the mammography re report would simply say, we don't see any cancer, which is a horrible uh, misuse of, of these technologies. You should say, we don't see cancer, and we could be missing all of the cancer. That's the honest way to do it. In fact, Dr. Bard says more than 94% of cancers seen only on ultrasound were invasive tumors. Because we can see things under the skin that basically can't be felt or are unclear, we can see things that the mammogram will miss completely and even the MRI, if it's too small, will not show. Which is what happened to Jane, a New York woman whose name we've changed for privacy. Last July, I was getting an exam by my um, primary physician, and he found a lump on my left breast. Her doctors performed a mammogram, which came back normal, but Jane learned she has dense breasts. I was just thinking it was very thick tissue that I must have. You know, I, I didn't attach anything to it in terms of that there was anything wrong with that. You know, just they said it was more difficult to do a mammogram on dense breasts. It wasn't until she was advised to get an MRI and an ultrasound that Jane learned she has a tumor. My mammogram did not show that I have um, uh, a lymph node um, nodule or something going on that of course the mammogram isn't anywhere near that and I had a breast MRI and that was much less painful and it actually showed more than what the mammogram did. It's just amazing that um, you know you can get that large of a false positive or negative that's huge you know and unfair to women to put them through that and not really get good answers these answers are so much better, you know. Those are much better answers, she says, although mammography will remain the standard screening tool for women, says Dr. Bard. You can find those screening guidelines and much, much more on this topic on our website, acsh.org. For the Council, I'm Anna Dolosky.